1884, the beginning of the end for the Wild West. 19-year-old Jacob McKay slowly dismounts from his dirt and sand-coated horse, his boots hitting the floor creating two small explosions of dust. He looks forward at the aged wooden door of his family home. The roof had gaps dotted about where tiles had come off over the years. To the left is a fence that attached to the wooden walls. In the field stood a horse, his father's. Both his mother's horse and their wagon were missing. Jacob sighed and slowly walked toward the house. He pushed open the door, the rusted metal hinges crying and flaking. Ah, Jacob, my boy. How was work at the ranch today? It was just fine, Pa. Jacob hit his hat to dust it and hung it up by the front door. What about you, Pa? Ah, you know, the usual. Life just being life. Jacob noticed something. His father's revolver was missing from its usual stand on the windowsill. He knew the gun was important to his parents, their most treasured possession, and yet, to this day, he didn't know why. Where's the gun gone, Pa? I hid it upstairs. Your ma told me that she's spoken with the sheriff. Apparently there's been a bunch of robberies in the area lately. I figured it would be safer to hide it under my bed. That way we can protect ourselves come nightfall. Speaking of your ma, where is she? I sent her to go and get some food for tomorrow night. She should be back by now. Jacob stood up and made his way over to the window, squinting in an effort to see through the dirt that was plastered to the glass. He could just make out a wagon on its way down the path towards the house. That must be her! Jacob rushed over and ripped open the door. Ma! An arm lifted above the head of the driver of the wagon and waved. As the wagon approached, Jacob could make out a bag of cans and fruits. Ma! Hello there, Jacob. How was work? It was just fine, Ma. Good. Where you been, Ma? Oh, I've just been down to town to pick up a few bits and pieces for tomorrow's celebration. What is it tomorrow? Why, it's the 25th anniversary from when I first met your pa. You know how we met? No. How? Well, I was just a young girl back then. Some fellas from the Squalor Gang tried to rob me. Held me at gunpoint, they did. Then your pa came over, told them to get lost. One of them took the hint, but the other one went for me. Your pa shot him. Shot him dead. It was the same gun he keeps on display now. He loves that gun, just as he loves you. If it weren't for him or that gun, I doubt neither of us would be alive. Jacob was surprised. He knew the gun was important to them, he just never knew how important. It gave him a new respect, not only for the gun, but also his father. He could never imagine his father to be the hero type, he seemed just to keep himself to himself and not get involved. He figured this was probably the reason as to why. You need any help getting that in, Ma? I'm fine. Can you unhitch Blue and put him out with your father's horse? Take Norman out there too. I'm sure the last thing you want is to wake up tomorrow morning and find your horses left home. Sure thing, Ma. His mother got up and swung the bag over her shoulder. Jacob approached his horse and grabbed it by the reins, leading it over to his mother's horse, Blue. He unhitched it from the wagon, the metal joints clanging as he dropped them to the floor. He took the horses out to the gate at the side of their home and took them out into the field. Go on, get he says, slapping the horses, scattering them out into the field. He shut the gate, creaking it closed, and went back inside. That night, the three of them sat down after his mother had cooked them all dinner. During the meal, they got on the conversation of the gun again. You know what, kid? When I'm old and dead, you can have that gun. I know your mother told you about it, and I know now it means just as much to you as it does to us. Really, Pa? Yeah, but I ain't planning on dying anytime soon, though. But one day... That fine weapon will be yours. The night pushed on and the three headed to bed. The next morning the sun rose, shining a blinding light on Jacob waking him. He could hear the chirp of birds and he made his way over to the window. With a bit of force he opened the window, pushing through the rusted hinges. He took a deep breath of the cool morning air, dressed himself wearing a dark and worn vest and a long aged coat picked up his hat from by the door and pressed it against his head. Opening the door and sauntering rightwards towards the gate, he tacked up Norman and the two set off down the path, turning left, heading toward the ranch. Upon returning home at evening, he noticed the front door was hanging on by only a single hinge. Suspecting the worst, he jumped off his horse and ran toward the house. 
his coat waving behind him in the wind. While running, he looked to the side to see both his parents' horses lie dead in a pool of blood. Bursting into the house, there were shelves and drawers strewn across the floor. Jacob ran onward and at the bottom of the stairs, face down, lay the lifeless body of his mother. A bullet hole travelled through the top of her head. Panicked, Jacob pushed further, stumbling up the stairs, and by the doorway of his parents' bedroom lay the corpse of his father, with one bullet hole through the head and another the torso. Jacob smashed through the bedroom door and quickly ducked down under the bed, pulled out a small chest. He threw it open, only to see nothing. No gun. Where is it? What have you goddamn bastards done? Your hands upon a dead man's gun and you're looking down the sides. Your heart is warm and the seams are torn and they've given you a reason to fight. <laughs>